This video goes over the easiest way to fit a curve to data, how to add error bars, and how to calculate the 95% confidence range. Let's get started. Okay, we begin with some data. I've separated the X points from the Y points. Well, it doesn't really matter when we make the plots. Here's the simplest way to fit a curve. So what you want to do is to design a curve that is of interest to you. So let's make a lin fit model, which is made of uh, some components, say C2 times X squared plus C1 times X plus C, again, underscore, underscore, zero to make the subscripts. And there's our model that's going to be a curve. So we use the fit procedure within the statistics package to fit our curve using the least squares method. Lin fit underscore curve colon uh, equals statistics colon dash fit open parentheses. Now we need to give it the model, the lin fit model. That's going to be our fit model curve. X points are Y points, and this is going to be a function of X. And when we do, we get that result. We can actually get more information about the curve by adding the following. I'll just copy and paste and put in after the X comma summarize. And now not only do we get our model, but we can see the values for the coefficients and the standard errors for these coefficients. At this point, we might want to plot both our data and our linear fit here. I've written this all out. Here's how to make a scatter plot, adding some interesting symbol size and a legend. Okay. I've also created a linear plot, a plot of the curve itself from the minimum value to the maximum value, adding a legend which is includes a writing it out linear fit, let's put a colon in, and actually the expression for the curve. And then finally we can display everything, adding a title and changing the size. At this point, I also want to point out that Maple will be able to read your data if you put it in the form of a vector. So instead of X points and Y points being lists, these are vectors as indicated by the greater than and less than sign. In addition, if you don't remember the scatter plot procedure within plots, you can always still use plots. X plot, Y plot, style is point, and we'll make it a boxed axis, and it looks just like that. In addition, if X points and Y points are put in matrices, which I can actually create by doing the following, X points is next to the vector Y points, I can still plot this data as well. Replace X points and Y points in with X, Y points, and you get the exactly the same result. So whether it's in the vector format, list format, or a matrix format, matrix pull will accept those formats in using both the calculation for fit and the plotting. Let's do a nonlinear fit now. So again, to make a fit, we need to create a model. So we'll call this the nonlinear fit colon equals. Our fit will have a amplitude. I will use e to the minus alpha times x squared, see if that works. I don't know, actually, let's make it a positive alpha. So there is our fit model. And then again, we write out the fit curve that we expect as a result. Nonlinear fit curve is defined from the statistics package, colon dash fit, give it the model nonlinear fit, comma, this time I'll give it both x, y points together, and it is a function of x. And that's what it says as the least squares fit using that particular curve. There is no summarize option for nonlinear fits. 
And now we can plot all of our curve and data points together. I created the nonlinear fit plot, which is from our nonlinear fit curve that Maple has produced. Um, I even added a nice legend here, and it's going to be in dark green. We plot all three plots together. I can change the axes. I can change the tick marks. And this is our image that we get in the end. If you wish to add error bars, then for all points, you have to give it some error amount. You don't have to give it in both directions. I've done it here, but since I have 10 points, I have to have 10 points of errors. Now I've created the error bar plot using the statistics package. I have to pass it the data, and here is where I enter the errors. They're called the options X errors and the option Y errors, and I can tell it what type of thickness I want for our errors. I've added all sorts of other fun things like what the color will be, how the labels are, how the label directions are. I can even change the label font. And this is what it looks like if we just plot the data. If we want to plot everything and also control the size, you again use display the plots and then you can change all the formats. Let's return to our linear fit model and I'd like to create a band around this curve such that I have 99% confidence that I've collected all the data points that fit within this band. How do I calculate that confidence interval? To do that, I go back to my fit. Again, I give it the information. This points, I'll give it X and Y points. And again, you have to give it the variable X that it's fitting to. There's our curve, which looks like that. I've set the confidence level as an option to 0.99. The default is 0.95. The output is I want the confidence intervals. What you do, now the coefficients that we had, C2, okay, uh, C1, and C0, fall within these ranges. How can I extract out that information? How can I extract out that information? Well, I'll call that C colon equals, and this is fairly unusual, OP, those are the operands, and I'm going to grab each individually from our confidence information. And now I have a matrix, basically, of points that are the left side and the right side of those confidence levels. I now can make a function for which I am going to add all my coefficients here, uh, 2xn, and I make it a function of x, and that will be our my lower limit model. And to that, I will calculate an upper limit model, which grabs the second point in the column and adds it to our x's. And now our function for the upper limit is, again, this type of linear model, but with these newer coefficients. Finally, I make a plot here of the two functions I want, the lower model function, the upper model function. I then display all three together. And when I do, I get a curve that looks like this. And now the band between the green and the blue lines are show that 99% confidence that I have captured all the data points within my linear fit curve. As always, leave a comment, and I do respond very quickly. In addition, look at the information. There is a document associated with this particular video. Next video will be on interpolation and extrapolation of data.